we've got Hasui and Decidui. And it, it's basically, Arcus is great. Let's make a list of what I think I'm going to play against. Let's play some stuff to counter it. Yeah, Ryota is also even fitting in a Galarian Moltres V. So multiple types of energy going on in the deck list. So lots to pick apart. I actually got to see, uh, I think it was in round four, a really interesting game where he was actually using Fly on his Pikachu V in panic situations. <laughs> he used it twice in one game and ended up winning that series. So uh, Ryota has been having good slices of fortune along the way, but is also playing at a really high level here. Absolutely, and it is worth pointing out there is a 2-2 line of Jolteon in this particular deck. That is, of course, the one that turns off the abilities of water-type Pokemon right. when there's a memory capsule attached. That might be relevant against a Palkia deck. Looking like a combination of this Jolteon memory capsule combo as well as flying Pikachu VMAX, uh, it feels like Ryota really is respecting the archetype that he's going to be coming up against in this round. Yeah, I mean, Palkia was very much on the radar, and there's a question of how hard do you go in trying to counter it. And I honestly think if you've got the Jolteon and the Flying Pikachu, you're kind of coming at it from two angles, because the Jolteon is shutting the deck down to a degree, turning off those abilities, and the Flying Pikachu is there hitting for weakness. So you, this is a matchup where Ryota's got to be feeling pretty good. We do see a Memory Capsule sitting there in the prizes, but there are two in the deck, so it's not the end of the world yet. Yep, and we're still seeing some shuffling up from Andrew, maybe an indication that we've seen a mulligan from him. Uh, but overall, not too awkward on the prize card front. Uh, Ryota is going to have an interesting time of filtering out these cards that are useless. I mean, he's got <laughs> the, uh, the, the Hidesidjuan, uh, Hisuian Decidui V-Star, I should say. The Moltres isn't going to be too useful. He's going to have to be cherry-picking the lightning stuff this game. Yeah, absolutely. That's all you're going to be aiming for here. Because you've got the counters, it's just about getting them out. We're probably going to see that early Arceus, as we tend to do. That's how you get Flying Pikachu set up. But that is a conduit. That is the early game. And you just go from there. And I like the way that this deck works. Because if you wander around the top tables, there are a lot of Arceus decks there. But, you know, somebody's playing Slacking. <laughs> Which, again, is from that new Pokemon Go expansion. We've seen people with Hisui and Decidueye, but then we've seen players like Antoine who are playing Lucario V-Star instead. We see a lot of flying Pikachu. That is extremely common in those decks. And there are just so many different ways to actually play it. Some big prize cards there for Andrew. His uh, path to the peak has found its way into the prize cards, as well as Leon. Leon can be a great way to push into even your higher hit point V Max Pokemon into a one hit KO. So some pretty awkward stuff there. Let's see how Andrew is going to respond to that as we are kicking off our round six here of the World Championships 2022 in London. It's going to be Andrew Estoparada kicking things off. Has a Sobble start and a level ball as he gets to search his deck here. Does look like a Sobble's coming out. Worth noting, Andrew also did prize his Radiant Greninja, which is obviously quite good, not just for that attack that can hit the bench, but it's also nice for, you know, concealing some cards, drawing some cards. It's a very nice thing indeed. So we do see Andrew here checking through the deck. Early doors, you need to check your prizes, make sure you know what's in there and what isn't. But Andrew put a Sobble right to the front and then checked for his prizes. We aren't being surprised here. Yeah, and Andrew does... Uh, note how to keep calm out on these top stages. Obviously very well accustomed to the World Championships. It's a tournament that he likes, I think it's fair to say. And uh, <laughs> this isn't the worst of starts so far. Of course, we are going to be looking for some Palkia in addition to this. But I'm not seeing any other early game ball search cards. Just lots of drill, uh, Drizzle activation. So he's going to have to pass things over to Ryota here. He kicks off with a free retreating flying Pikachu V. It's exactly what you want to see for Ryota. I believe his ideal situation would be trying to use a Trinity Charge this turn to start threatening Pikachu from that next turn. Yeah, Trinity Charge would be absolutely great. We do see the Arceus coming down there, and we've got an oh, wow. Eevee as well. There's no surprise. That Eevee is going to be absolutely huge this game. If you can get the Jolteon and get the Memory Capsule, that is going to be a huge deciding factor in the game. I mean, imagine if Andrew's relying on the Shady Dealings and then doesn't have any, although we did see a basic energy there, so no, no energy acceleration, I'm afraid, this turn. Ryota debating whether or not it's worth going for Marnie. He's holding on to a Jolteon, I believe, so that could be the only reason why he would prefer to pass. And is just debating based on uh, Andrew's hand, but does in the end opt to Marnie here. He will get himself a fresh five cards. Andrew will be seeing only four. His current hand will be going to the bottom of the deck. Ryota doesn't really need much else this turn. He's already got the attachment established onto an Arceus, and he's not really under any pressure from Andrew. So this is really just trying to push himself towards uh, a V-Star for the following turn. 
Yeah, as much as we want to get the jolt on, we want to try and guarantee that jolty on. The Arceus is probably even more important, at least in the early games, you need to get rolling. And sometimes, even if you don't shut down those abilities with Jolty on, you can just run through a flying Pikachu. What have you seen, Joe? <laughs> Marnie's done its thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at Galarian Zigzagoon, I'm looking at Scoop Up Net. I think Roxanne and just the water energy in hand. Uh, Ryota's got a big break here, the Marnie's done him good. Oh, that Marnie has worked absolutely beautifully. Now, it does look like we've got... Is that Professor's Research I saw yeah, a minute ago? I'm pretty sure there's a Professor's Research in here. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. We see it there. We've got a couple of lightning energy. That's the awkward thing, I think. It really is, because you want the double turbo energy to try and use Arceus V-Star's attack this turn. Well, the same merit. I believe he only plays two copies of lightning energy. Ooh. So instead of getting an attack this turn, he's committing the lightning energy so that he can use a flying Pikachu uh, on a future turn still will get himself seven fresh cards here could be looking to uh still star buff and try and establish the capsule jolteon combo for some additional disruption that we do have the jolteon here which is lovely so if there was a star buff coming out then we would be able to get the memory capsule very very easily but yeah you, you certainly cannot discard both your lightning energy and just say right. goodbye to flying <laughs> Pikachu right from the beginning of the game. That's just, you can't do that. It looks like we're actually seeing a fly here, which is going to be just short of a KO, even with the weakness. But are we getting immunity? No. It's just the, uh, the Thundershock, actually, just the little first attack. Oh, I'm thinking energy. paralysis. You are yeah. correct. <laughs> Still would have bought a turn, potentially, yeah. if there was no evolution. And the Capacious Bucket is no help to Andrew at all. You can play the bucket just to improve two top decks. Uh, removing additional water energy from play, but it's going to be another basically actionless turn here. Yeah. Really rough. If all you're doing is trying to get some cards out of your deck to hopefully draw something better next turn, that's not a good start. It's not what you're looking for. And, and Flying Pikachu actually can just do that same attack again and get a KO on the Sobble <laughs> if they want to. Huge pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it gives me a bit more time to, to try and get some more stuff set up. But it's at least an option. And, I mean, Andrew, at this stage, it, we're in top deck mode, and it's not going well at all. Asking how many cards are in hand, but I think at this stage, it's not. So we do see an energy on the Sobble. Might actually I think be... he's retreating, yeah. I think he's just not allowing Ryu to, to have those really easy prize cards. <laughs> that... I respect it. I mean, it's all you've got to do here. Yeah, well, I'm then... <laughs> If you want to get a KO, you've already got the energy on there. It's already in the active. As much as it's a silly way to get a KO, two-hit KOing a, a Sobble, it still works. I'm not sure if there's any supporter outside of Marnie in Ryota's hand. So simply by retreating, Andrew may have bought himself a means of getting Marnie out of the game. But instead, we're going to be seeing Quick Ball for Luminion V. That's going to change things up. Instead, Ryota can grab a professor's research and continue to dig into the deck w without disrupting uh, Andrew's really awkward hand. So a big heads up play, grabbing this Luminion and having the option for an alternative route here. Yeah, there comes a point where you've got to stop trying to avoid the money because sooner or later your opponent will draw out of it. We're not there. Andrew's had a terrible start. He's clearly got nothing in hand. Ryota's got a nice alternative option going for the Luminion. You can't put yourself too far behind just to try and not help your opponent. But Ryota doesn't have to do that. So we get the Luminion. We get the boss's orders. We're going to get a new hand of seven cards. And there's so much that we can potentially... Do. Oh! Lots of supporters. I think it's two boss's orders, two Marnies having to hit the discard pile there. I think that might have been it. It's painful, but... If you want to launch an attack and start taking prize cards, it's what you've got to go for. Does find the V-Star, so we'll actually begin to take some prize cards this turn. Yeah, we've got the V-Max and we've got the V-Star, so we can use Star Birth, go and get whatever energy you like. And that uh, active Sobble is definitely going to go and be KO'd. Would like a memory capsule as well. Maybe we can actually get that off of the Arceus here, because yep. presumably you just need an energy in the memory capsule. Double turbo capsule, that sounds scary to me. <laughs> yeah, because then even if Andrew draws into the Drizzile, they don't do anything. Yeah, you've really limited a ton of outs from Andrew. The Drizziles themselves, the level balls, even Irida becomes pitiful <laughs> at this point <laughs> without the option to shady deals. So Ryota... Yep, and Andrew's done. <laughs> yeah, I would see the scoop from Andrew. Ryota does take game one, and that's got to be the correct decision from Andrew. You're not going to win that game. It's not a great matchup anyway when you combine the Jolteon and the Flying Pikachu, but when you've got free Sobble on the board, nothing in your hand, and Drizzile is turned off, you've, you might as well just stop.
Yeah, and I think giving yourself as much time as possible to try and turn this around is going to be the best strategy here. We can see both players are on X and O records, not even getting any ties. So they both have great respect for the clock and they are trying to win games as quickly as possible. And sometimes accepting that you're losing a game and you're at an unsurmountable loss, it's best to just pick them up and try again in the next round. And it is weirdly important as a skill to avoid ties. In a tournament like this, where we're only going down to a top eight plus bubble cut. Right. It, there's, there's just not many spaces available in cut. And if you start taking ties here and there, you are not going to end up... You know, if you turn three losses into ties, you're probably not making cut anyway. You are better off just playing a little bit faster, scooping potentially a little bit earlier, giving yourself the opportunity to earn those wins because they're the players that end up making it up into top cut. And we're going to see a bunch of people that have got a couple of ties on their board that miss out on top cut and they're going to know, oh, if I'd have just scooped this game a little bit earlier, I had right. it in game three, but I ran out of time. Yeah, how often do you say, oh, I lost because I didn't have enough turns to win the game. My board state was way ahead of my opponent. I just didn't have those one or two key final turns. Uh, so, Andrew, trying to not get into that position. If you're Ryota, you've got to be feeling good. You're in a matchup that you've teched heavily for and already one game up with plenty of time on the clock. So he could be one of our first 6-0 and players here at the World Championships, booking his... Uh, place into the top eight. Yeah, it certainly looks like that's a very strong option at the moment. That seems like it may well be happening, but there is a reason Andrew Estrada is 2014 world champion. There's a reason why Andrew is sitting at 5 0 here today. We do see a mulligan from Ryota there. Um, yeah, that's all right. Go and get another basic. That'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, one of the nice things about playing that flying Pikachu with the free retreat, it means you can start with Arceus or you can start with Pikachu and hopefully get that turn one Arceus going. So I do like that. Yeah, two additional good leads in the deck is never a bad thing. Uh, players are always weighing up the risk of cards like Luminion V and Chromat because they're just so awful to start. <laughs> Such low hit point, two prize liabilities. So giving yourself additional just basics in your deck means that you're forced to start with them less and you have more ideal turns. Yeah, that's always a good thing. I like ideal turns. They make me very, very happy. <laughs> Does look like we do have a basic from Ryota here, which is wonderful. It means that we can get going. There are a couple of options. There's definitely an Arceus in hand there, which is a pretty good start. It looks like that's what Ryota's going for. Um, do we have another basic? I mean, presumably, it's a weird decision to make if you don't. I guess the risk is if you are going second and your Arceus comes under fire, you don't want it to easily just get KO'd by the Palkia before you're able to Starbirth or anything like that. So yeah. maybe just protecting it on the bench when you're player two is the best uh, choice for Ryota here. That may well be the case. So we are going off here in game two. We've got an Eevee, it turns out, going first against the Manaphy. So starting off with a couple of little Pokemon. And Andrew is going to have the option to kick things off. I think his hand is awful again. Oh, really? I see water energy. <laughs> Oh, oh no, water no. energy pass. And there's an Irida, but that's not going to do much because you can't use Battle VIP pass turn two. So there is the Arceus, as you suggested. It is going down onto the bench. We do see a capture energy here. So that's going to go and get another basic. And as much as Andrew may not have had a great oh, start, man. it looks like Ryota really does. It's a weird deck because you've got Arceus and a bunch of other stuff. It seems like a deck that may be prone to some inconsistent starts, but not what we're seeing on stream to begin here. It's a really rough break for Andrew. You've just had, you've just come off a game where you basically weren't able to get into the game at all. You're hoping to change your fortunes and turn this around ASAP and it's just not lining up for you. A couple of Capture Energy in Ryota's list, even though he's playing three different types of energy, he's still respecting how strong it is to get these Capture Energies down to try and find some additional basic Pokemon that are more ball search cards that could be played here from Ryota. Once again, does have the option of either Luminion or Crobat. So we'll see how he wants to play it. Yeah, there are plenty of options coming out here. Unfortunately, not going to be getting the turn one Trinity charge, which is what you really want going second with Arceus. But when you've got this kind of setup, you can't really complain. I do need to point out that this is our third game of the day on stream. And both the other two games, we had very short, very bad game ones that turned into really good sets. <laughs> so I'm hoping that's what we're heading for now. Well, we know at least there's Irida, so we can guarantee see some basic water Pokemon coming out of the deck. And here we go. Irida is going to kick off uh, Andrew's turn here. I think ideally you look to find a Sobble and a Palkia. Yeah. Or maybe just double Palkia, but it feels so awkward to be without uh, Inteleon the entire game. 
That said, of course, you can always get locked out of using your Shady Deals regardless, so maybe just double Palkia is Andrew's best route here. It is awkward. That Eevee is already down. If there's no Eevee down, then I think the Sobble Palkia is absolutely to play without really thinking about it. With that Eevee down, you know that all it's going to take is a jolt to your memory capsule, and then that Sobble might as well not be there. It's just taking <laughs> up a bench space, and that is not where you want to be. So it depends how lucky you feel, but we do see a level wall coming down from the Irida here, so it's got to be the Sobble that we're searching for. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a retreat keep calling uh, to get as many Sobble out as possible. There is a capacious bucket to grab water energy. And you're just hoping that because it's an EV in the active position, that even if Ryota does get to Starbirth, it's difficult for them to find a switch card, a double turbo, as well as the memory capsule and Jolteon combo. Yeah, that's got to be what you're hoping for. And I think you've absolutely called it here, Joe. We've seen a Manaphy manually retreating, the energy hitting the discard, and then Sobel is going to keep calling for probably two Sobel, because you do want to try and keep a bench space yeah. open for Palkia. I don't really hate the third either because you're expecting your opponent to Starbirth and at least take something off the board. And you don't want to draw back into any of these Inteleon pieces, but Andrew is still opting to uh, leave uh, one more rooting around in the deck. Yeah, it's always nice to have room for a second Palkia. It's always nice to have a Sobble in the mid game to you know, set yourself up for some shady dealings down the line. So we do see Andrew at least getting going here. There are multiple Pokemon out. Energy has been attached to multiple different Pokemon. It, it's not a great start, but it's a start. It's more than we can say for game one. And we'll see how Ryota wants to navigate his turn. We know he was holding on to Ultra Ball on the previous turn, so we've got at least Starbirth. Alternatively, he could opt to go for Quick Ball first and grab either Luminion V or Crobat V, see some additional cards before selecting what to Starbirth for. It is going to be that Quick Ball. Removing one of those flying Pikachu V Max. He's already been able to evolve one up this turn. And it's obviously a scary Pokemon to stare down if you are Andrew. That Max Balloon attack is very dangerous and is able to hit for weakness. There's going to be a Crobat V coming to the hand. Then an Ordinary Rod putting the flying Pikachu V Max back <laughs> into the deck. Some nice sequencing to minus one once again in order to get maximum card value here from your Crobat V's dark asset. Yeah, it's quite nice. It means a Pikachu V Max is available later in the game. It means you've got fewer cards in hand. You're going to be drawing more with the Crobat, trying to get yourself towards the V Star and the double turbo energy. And, I mean, honestly, jolt your memory capsule and some kind of pivot. This would all be very good if you could pull it all off. Still hasn't played a supporter card, still hasn't used Starbirth. So <laughs> there's a lot of reach still to be had here for Ryota. Ultra Ball is being spied. You've got to think the Ultra Ball's coming down for the Arceus, because even if you want to play something like a Marnie, you still need to get that Arceus out first of all. You want the attack, you want the V-Star power, so you've got to think the Ultra Ball is going to come down for the Arceus. But there is, there's some thought going on with Ryota here. I mean, what's, what's the counter Arceus? It's mostly just what to discard. <laughs> uh, it's going to be Capture Energy and Ultra Ball. I think it's certainly going to be an Arceus V-Star here. Oh, yeah. I believe you're happy enough to just rip the Marnie now. See if you can draw into double turbo, switch out, or any of these Jolteon pieces, hoping that you can then Starbirth towards the final pieces of your combo. Yeah, if you can get everything but two cards, then Starbirth to get those final two cards would be perfect. It's one of the great things about Starbirth. You can use it straight away, you can save it for the mid game, or like here, you can play your supporter, because you need far more than two things. Play your supporter, see what you get, and hope that Starbirth will be enough to essentially finish off the combo. So here comes Amani. Shuffle your hand, put it on the bottom of your deck. Ryota's going to get five cards. Andrew's going to get four. I mean, there is a possibility here that Ryota has just an absolutely amazing turn, taking a KO while shutting down Shady Dealings. It's a lot to ask, but let's see if he can get there or at least a little bit close. Ooh, Andrew, uh, a little bit quick off the mark, but it's great to see that he laid out those cards and didn't uh, access the hand. So don't think the... Neither the Crobat or the Marnie was much help to Ryota, oh, so no. it may be, I'm saying in air quotes, just the switch and double turbo energy uh, being selected to still power up a Pikachu, but it's by far from the ideal turn that was on the cards. 
Now, you still get the KO, you still get the energy on the Pikachu, but you don't shut off Shady Dealings, and it's it's not everything you're hoping for. I think you do still have to do that. Here goes a V-Star Marker being flipped, and I think it has to be a switch and a double turbo energy. But if, if you're Andrew, you're feeling all right about this. You've had a bad couple of turns, you've had a slow start, but now it's coming back to you with a chance to maybe get a, a, a origin form Palkia V-Star, try and get some pressure on, maybe take a KO, start getting up some of those Drizzle out and Shady Dealings, before you're ending up locked out of them. It's not an ideal situation for Andrew, but oh my goodness, it's better than it was game one. Yeah, Ryota has to be fairly content. You know, oftentimes you're really happy that you got the turn two attack with Arceus, and that's exactly what's happened here. And um, he will be going back into the deck because he will be accelerating a lot of energies to this flying <laughs> Pikachu. He initiates, his, uh, initiates the prize race here, and that flying Pikachu is going to be looking awful intimidating for Andrew. Yeah, being able to take a KO while accelerating energy is huge. Being able to take KO while accelerating energy to a Pokemon that is a pretty much perfect counter to your opponent's entire deck, that is amazing. So Andrew here, yeah, sure, he can bring out the Palkia, but Palkia doesn't do enough to one-hit KO Arceus V-Star, and it's probably going to get KO'd right back by your flying Pikachu. So the question becomes, what does Andrew actually do here? What? What can he do to try and avoid the trap that's been laid? Because Ryota's not hiding anything. Ryota's saying, hey, <laughs> I've got flying Pikachu. What He's are you going to do about it? Yeah, exactly. And all of this to say, Andrew's also been hit with Amani at the same time. So even getting anything going is going to be difficult for him. I don't think there's any water energy or a couple water energy in the discard pile to possibly um, star portal. Uh, no re Wow, I think the Marnie's punished him again pretty hard. Oh, no. I was looking at Roxanne. I don't know if there was any other pieces. Let's see if the draw for turn brings anything. Water energy. Man, it's rough again. The Syrian Heavy Ball may be a bailout option, but I don't remember if there was anything important for him. No, game no. one, there was a Radiant Greninja, which would have been great, but it's not in there in game two, so we can't go and grab it, so... And this has got to feel bad when you're sitting there and you're 5-0 and oh, and you're thinking, hey, maybe this is the year I can go ahead and repeat, become the, uh, you know, the <laughs> second person to win two world championships. And actually, as it stands at the moment, and 5-1 is not a bad record, but it's not 6-0. and oh, And there's just not much here for Andrew. He does get a second Palky down, which is lovely. But do you really want to go down by three prizes before you've even gotten rolling? I mean, this Marnie... It was game winning in game one for Ryota, and it's looking, you know, it may be a little bit too early to call it, but it's looking very dangerous for Andrew once again. Just getting nothing off of the four cards and draw for turn. Gets a back, backup Palkia, is able to turn attach. But that's all he can do here. Yeah, there really isn't much else coming out. We do see the Jolteon. Oh boy. And we see an Evolution Incense coming here as well which isn't going to do much. There's no, there's no Pokemon on the board that can actually evolve right now. But we've got a bit of deck thinning, if nothing else. Yeah, we do know there are some more random cards still in the deck that could be thinned from uh, Ryota here. He's going to cherry pick one of those Arceus V-Star. I believe there's still the third copy in his deck. It's just going to be extra fodder for some ball search here. The Hisui and Decidui V-Star also going to hit the discard pile with Quick Ball. Ryota is eyeing up the option to Professor's Research, and that could indicate we are looking for um, a Luminion V here. But instead, it's going to be an Arceus V. Uh, I wonder if that means Ryota is going to look for a Gusting play this turn and take a one prize knockout with Arceus and power, up, and power up another threat. Or we could potentially be seeing just the payment of retreat and attack with a flying Pikachu this turn. Both seem very strong. I was going to say, they're both really, really good options. There was a Luminion in hand, so right. that can go and get the supporter card, which, as you predicted, is going to be that Professor's Research. And, I mean, this is just going exactly the way Ryota drew it up. If Ryota was writing this as a story, he'd be like, and then I got the free energy on the <laughs> flying Pikachu, and it all worked out beautifully. And that is exactly what's happening. We get the energy on Arceus, which may well just be to help retreat. Yeah. We see the Professor's Research getting a new hand of seven. And, I mean, what more does he really need right now? Capsule? That'll yeah. do. <laughs> Capsule, wow. that's a good one. <laughs> that is really shutting down. Once again, so many outs now from the top of, top of Andrew's deck are just so much weaker. Uh, I really think that the lock is pretty much established. And Andrew needs something fast here. Yeah, it's like Ryota decided that he can take some losses to some decks, but it will not be Palkia. 
Uh, thanks to Rio to taking three prize cards now, at least the one supporter in hand, the Roxanne is finally open to use. Andrew will get a fresh six cards at last. And Ryota finally getting a bit of a speed bump down to just a couple cards on his end. And we'll see if Andrew can cherry pick uh, any Palkia V-Star now. Doesn't have any shady deals to help him get there. He needs to find the physical outs at this point. And the issue here is going to be that you need to try and take out Pikachu. You can't just ignore the Pikachu, no. but it's got very high HP. It's one hitting base at the everything. So Andrew needs to find a way to keep this setup going, starting from free prizes down, and also be taking out the Pikachu at the same time, which is, it's so much to ask for all in one go. Being a VMAX, not a V-Star, means that the HP is generally yeah. out of range, and Andrew Estrada does concede. Ryota Ishiyama takes a pretty quick 2-0 victory, becomes our first player to go to six wins, and quite possibly, though not confirmed, <laughs> the first player to put themselves into top cut at the 2022 World Championships. Really impressive stuff. Ryota saying that the flying Pikachu VMAX isn't enough to have a convincing game into the origin form Palkia, so why not shove in a <laughs> Jolteon just to do the trick? And I'm sure he's faced a few of them today, and it's really coming up trumps. Fantastic stuff to see. Yeah, when you know Palkia is going to be as ubiquitous as it is, and you know, it, it's kind of the day two thing we've been talking about all weekend. When you get a chance to look at day one, that helps to inform your decision for day two. Now, I don't know what Ryota was thinking coming in before this, but certainly when we look at the deck now, it's very obvious obvious, Palkia was a, a real priority. Not just hitting it for weakness, but also shutting down those abilities on all those water Pokemon. Because it's not just the Shady Dealings, it's also the V-Star power on Palkia. It's yep. also the ability on Radiant Greninja. All of that gets shut down. It's, it's really, really harsh. Combined with the hitting for weakness, and, you know, we see Hisui and Decidueye's in there as an Arceus counter, which yep. is lovely. But I think it's pretty obvious looking at that deck. I will not lose to Palkia. <laughs> <laughs> and seeing the field yesterday, seeing the field today, that looks like a really good choice. Yeah, we didn't know if there was a possible deck that had a matchup as strong as Ryota has found the matchup to be against Palkia. So, yeah, over-respecting it seems to be the correct play at the World <laughs> Championships because Palkia has come in droves. Yeah, absolutely. And we've seen formats, you know, back in, you know, we mentioned 2014 where four of the top five decks were Verizon and Genesect. We saw it in 2012 where I think six of the, or five of the top eight decks were Mewtwo Dark Cry, right. and two of the others were straight Dark Cry. <laughs> you can go back to 2005 when the Japanese players brought the Team Magma deck that nobody was expecting, and again, we saw, I think, five spots in the top cut. If you can identify that dominant deck and then turn up with a counter to it, you can have a very, very good run. Yeah, and commiserations for Andrew there. He didn't really get into the game uh, in either game one or two. The Marni wheel was spun, and uh, it was pretty deadly in both games. Yeah, it didn't come up well, but I do have to think, watching that game, let's say Andrew had a great start. 